Welcome back to Hungry for History. In today's episode, we are going to talk about Nian Gao, a type of rice cake prepared for the Chinese New Year. The Laba Festival, which we talked about in the last video, is considered a prelude to the New Year. After the Laba Festival, there are a number of things to do for the New Year. For example, people often clean their houses, stick paper cutouts on their windows, put up Chinese posters, and make all sorts of food, including Nian Gao. Let's get it started! Today's rice cake recipe dates back to the 6th century CE. Nian Gao is a sticky rice cake made of glutinous rice flour. In Mandarin, Nian means year and Gao means cake. Gao also sounds the same as the word for height or higher up in Mandarin. So eating the rice cake conveys the wish for a higher income and a higher position and the growth of children and generally the promise of a better year. Nowadays, people consider it good luck to eat Nian Gao during the Chinese New Year. The original recipe is from the book called Ji Min Yao Shu, which in English means essential techniques for the common people published in the 530 CE. It is the earliest and the most complete Chinese agricultural treatise to have survived. Its author, Jia Sixie, was a local governor in today's Shandong province under the Northern Wei dynasty. He describes how to plant and cultivate different kinds of crops, how to breed domestic animals, and how to store and prepare agricultural products, as well as how to make more than 250 recipes. His recipe of the rice cake says, quote, grind the glutinous rice into flour, sift the flour through a silk mesh, add water and honey to the flour, mix until the dough is as hard as a dough for soup noodle. Knead the dough with hands, make it over 30 inch in length and over 2.0 inch in width. Decorate the dough with Chinese dates and chestnuts. Spread oil over bamboo leaves and use the leaves as a wrapping in which the dough was poured into. Steam the rice cake until it is thoroughly done. The recipe does not provide any information about the quantity of each ingredient involved. There is another problem. The size of the cake is supposed to be around 30 inch long and 2.6 inch wide. It's like a rectangular cube. I don't have a steamer that is big enough to hold a 30 inch long cake and I took the liberty to change the size and the shape of the cake since my steamer can only fit a 7 inch round pan. To make this recipe, you need 12 ounces of glutinous rice flour, 8 ounces of hot water, half a cup of honey, 4 bamboo leaves, half a cup of Chinese dates, and half a cup of chestnuts. Step 1. Soak 4 dried bamboo leaves in clean water overnight. Put something heavy on the top of leaves to make sure they are completely underwater. Then soak the chestnuts and Chinese dates. Next morning, cut the dates into smaller pieces and take out the pits. Cut the chestnuts into smaller pieces as well. Add a half a cup of honey to a measuring cup. Then pour in 8 ounces hot water. Stir until the honey completely dissolves in the water. In a large bowl, Add the glutinous rice flour, then slowly pour the honey water into the flour. Use a spatula to mix the flour and water until you have a dough. It is important to be mindful of the dough consistency. If the dough is too wet, it won't hold its shape. When the dough no longer sticks to your hands, it's ready. Cover the dough with a towel and let it rest. While the dough is resting, prepare your steamer. Fill the steamer with enough water for an hour steaming. Bring the water to a boil. Take the soaked bamboo leaves, stack them in the baking pan. Make sure the whole bottom is covered. Sprinkle the olive oil. Use a brush to spread out the oil on the bamboo leaves. Next, decorate the dough with dates and chestnuts. Arrange the dates and chestnuts on the top side first. Then flip the dough upside down and gently place it in the cake pan. Now you can decorate the other side with dates and chestnuts. When the steamer is ready, put the cake pan in the steamer's basket. Cover and steam the cake for about an hour. 
While we are waiting for the cake to be done, let me walk you through the story behind the Chinese New Year rice cake. The main ingredient in this rice cake recipe is glutinous rice, which is a sticky variety of Asian rice. By mapping the genetic mutation of glutinous rice, scientists from North Carolina University find that Southeast Asia was the geographic origin of the sticky rice. The rice has migrated north to become an important part of the diet in places like China, Japan, and Korea. Scientists in China also find that sticky rice was widely used as a construction material. By analyzing the makeup of ancient mortar sampled from historic architectures including the Great Wall, they realized that for thousands of years, sticky rice paste had been mixed with lime mortar to assemble structures in China. According to a popular folktale, Niangao originated in the city of Suzhou, where it was the capital of the state of Wu in the 6th century BCE. The king He Lü commanded Wu Zixu, who was the general, to fortify the city walls. When the construction was completed, Wu Zixu told his aides that after my passing, if the country meet with some disaster, that the people suffer from starvation, you are to go to the main gate and blow its guard towers dig to depths of 3 feet, and supplies of food may be gotten. Later, Wu Zixu was falsely accused of disloyalty and ordered to commit suicide. When a neighboring state invaded Wu and cut off its supplies, some of Wu Zixu's former officers remember his earlier instructions. They dug at the base of the guard towers and discovered that there were layers of bricks made of whitish substance. Those bricks turn out to be dehydrated rice cake. People cooked the rice bricks and prevented widespread famine in the state of Wu. The tradition of making rice cake in the shape of a brick is to commemorate Wu Zixu. This is just one of many folk tales about the origins of the rice cake. We are not sure when rice cake became the dominant Chinese New Year rice cake. By the 17th century, a scholar noted that people in the capital of Beijing ate a rice cake called Nian Niangao as their New Year celebration food. It was made of glutinous millet, which was sweetened and steamed and very sticky to the touch. Niangao was made not only as food but also as special sacrifice. According to Chinese popular religion, there are three domains in the cosmos, heaven, earth, and the underworld and each domain is populated by a host of gods and goddesses. The Jade Emperor was considered to be the ruler of heaven. It was said that the emperor ordered the kitchen god to supervise and inspect the conduct of people on the earth. This belief is recorded as early as the 2nd century BCE by Prince Liu An in his compilation Huai Nan Zi. Quote, the god of the hearth returns to heaven on the last day of the year, there to inform of men's crimes and shortcomings." Unquote. The kitchen god was usually represented by a paper effigy or miniature statue placed above the kitchen stove. Around the 23rd of the 24th day of the 12th month, each family would send their kitchen god to heaven by burning the paper effigy. But in order to ensure a good report before the Jade Emperor, people must give offerings to the kitchen god. The sweet rice cake was prepared as one of the offerings to make sure the kitchen god would say sweet things about the family. When the family were ready to welcome the kitchen god back to their kitchen, they would place a new paper effigy above the kitchen stove. After steaming the cake for an hour, poke a toothpick into the cake. It's done if the toothpick comes out clean. Remove the cake from the steamer, let it cool, Put it in the refrigerator overnight until it becomes firm. When you are ready to enjoy, slice the cake into pieces. In a frying pan, add some oil, fry the pieces on both sides. Now it's time to try out the fried rice cake. It's actually my favorite part of every episode. When was the first time you tried or you heard Rulian Gao? That was actually recently. So up until you started researching uh, the food, I hadn't heard of it. And uh, being able to go through and read and edit your script, I found the history really intriguing. Especially the, the uh, mythology about them uh, using it 
To make bricks? To make bricks. And I was thinking, how could bricks taste good? But like, it's hi historically true that they use uh, a glutinous rice flour and uh, as a building material to assemble the structures. Which really has my curiosity peaked of how good is this? <laughs> so, but have you had any food made of glutinous rice flour? I have. And I really love mochi, which is one of my favorites. And then a close second would be the glutinous rice balls that are filled with a black sesame. And I'm not quite sure what they're called. Uh, we call them Tang Yuan in China. Actually, it is one of the uh, Chinese Chinese New Year celebration food as well. Okay. And maybe we can make it like during the celebration. Sounds great. Okay, let's try out the Nian Gao first. Okay. I would like to try first since you have never had them. All right. So what do you think? So the first things that I notice is that this has a good balance of chewy density and a little bit of stickiness. In the flavor, it's a light honey sweetness, but occasionally I'm getting some crunchy notes with uh, some kind of nut. I agree with you that it's fairly chewy, and but it's a little bit sticky. Actually, some part of it stick to my teeth, and it has a good um, balance of sweetness, not really like overwhelming, and it's just semi sweet. I like the sweetness from the Chinese states and the honey. Yeah, I agree. I could see these disappearing quickly <laughs> if I had free reign to the plate. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. That's all we have for you today. If you like this video or if you happen to make the recipe for yourself, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and put them down in the comment section below. And then if you'd like to show support for Hungry for History, uh, please leave us a like, share it with your friends, or subscribe. It'll really help us with YouTube's algorithm. If you are going to celebrate the Chinese New Year, I wish you a Happy New Year. Xin Nian Kuai Le. Xin Nian Kuai Le. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye bye.